Hi there, welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. This time we're going to take the opportunity to look at a little bit closer detail on one of the guns in the collection. Now there's a couple of uh, just sort of admin points, please do ensure you're subscribed to this channel, please click on the subscribe button, uh, bottom right hand side of your screen there should be a little red dot, click on it if you're not subscribed. When you do, please make sure that you go in and click for your notifications, click on the bell on the right hand side of the screen and click on all, otherwise it'll only give you a few of the videos that are already popular and you've probably seen so make sure that you get to see all of our content that's coming forward um, this gun's been in the collection for a few years now it's a H series first world war gun we'll talk a bit more about the detail of it but what's quite remarkable about it is that it's skeletonized we can see all of the action and all of the parts so it gives us an opportunity to be able to use it as a training and demonstration piece as was originally intended uh, by the Indian Army it seems actually when this was skeletonized so it's one that was a British produced gun uh, say the H series there uh, were produced at um, Erith and then uh, towards the uh, back end of the First World War, the Great War, uh, October to, to December 1918 for this serial number. But it's in a smooth jacket. So as opposed to the fluted jacket of the First World War guns, and you've probably seen our Owl series video. If not, you know, top right hand corner should be a link now where we talk about the fluted jackets that were there for strength. This one is a smooth jacket, and the smooth jacket from the First World War to the Second World War is slightly different, so we'll talk about that when we zoom in. But I'm going to talk to you about a bit more detail about all of the different components, how it works, and also what we've done to it in the collection to make it that little bit useful. So please you know, carry on watching. Look at that, it's a windy day today. Um, please carry on watching and please do subscribe and support us on Patreon uh, where you'll get you know, insight into these videos a little bit more, premieres of them, as well as the additional benefits uh, that we're able to offer there. So running from £3 a month, become one of our MOGs and support the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. To do, we've got loads of plans that we'll share more and more of over the coming weeks and months. So let's start front to back. And here we've got the Mark II muzzle attachment that we talked about recently in our questions and answers video. The, the cone there's the Mark II. Uh, everything else is pretty standard, but obviously we've got this large cutaway. So we can see there the steam tube. So this tube here runs along the top uh, and we can see the cutaway on there. That This is what collects the steam. So what happens is if we slide this brass back, you can actually see where the steam is collected in this hole and although it's uh, part way down, we'll go down to the other end and you'll see a, a hole at the other end. Now this has a sliding tube over the top of it that when the gun is elevated or depressed, it goes over one end or the other so that you don't get water blocking up the tube um, when the gun's at an angle and you get water levels at an angle. So if it's at elevated position, the water will be sat like that, it would be blocking this hole and that would potentially create quite a dangerous uh, water lock in the system where the water then doesn't come down this pipe and go into the into the condenser hose that would be attached here to the boss. Now that's obviously come off. Um, you know, one of the rivets for this fitting has come off. You can just see the screw of it there. Um, because you know, in, in the skeletonization process, they sort of cut a little bit too much out. But yeah, great to be able to see how this steam tube actually works. Now, what you've got inside, if we can just look in, is the barrel there and you've got this cup this brass cup that fits in here which means that when the barrel's coming in from the back you can actually run it along this brass uh, plate in the base of it and it will come up into the cup itself um, so that you can you know, put the barrel in easier really and that's threaded on the inside there so that when this is uh, constructed and when this is put together it's actually something you could you can put in and replace. Um, this obviously doesn't come apart once it's seam welded in, uh, but you you can you, you can replace it and it's easier to manufacture. Now, if we just take an opportunity to look at one of the posters down here, you can see it in yellow here with the barrel in pink. And this explains this tube uh, arrangement quite nicely in that the steam, you know, when this boils up, the green is the water and the steam. This goes into this hole, the steam runs along here and starts to condense down there and comes out of that bottom piece. 
So yeah, these posters are all available um, on our website and, and through our eBay shop. And also for patrons that join up, I think it's the uh, first class machine gunner we'll, and above, uh, we'll get some of these posters as their benefits as well. So uh, Marksman Machine Gunner, forgive me. So Marksman Machine Gunner and our Machine Gun Instructor benefits get these posters or yeah, they get this particular example here and if I can cram any more into with the postage allowing me to I certainly will uh, so yeah so you've got the muzzle attachment here what's also really nice on this front end is these markings now this seems to indicate so uh, I think these are Indian ordnance markings and in indicating that 1044 October 44 is when this was skeletonized or certainly through refit so I think it's when it was skeletonized another point that I just talked about on um, the water jackets in the intro section there was these spun these are not drawn so when you're looking at a water, smooth water jacket they're not it's one piece but the manufacturing techniques of the day meant that we couldn't um, draw from a single piece we couldn't expand metal in the same way that we could from the 1930s and it's actually the Australians that um that managed to do that first in mass production so what we did was we, was we uh, drew it slightly thicker and then spun it down on the lathe to save as much metal as possible and much weight so they spun it down on the lathe like this and you can see these lathe marks um, tooling marks on, on that which is really nice so this obviously was painted when we first got it uh, we haven't repainted it partly to be able to show this bit off but also because we're not really sure what to paint it as because traditionally you see skeletonized guns with all of the cutaway pieces all red outlined but we don't know when that started so I don't want to and there's no evidence of red paint on this when we were cleaning it so I don't know who does that um, I don't know if it's a post-war thing but we'd certainly like to and we'd like some formal official paperwork to prove it not or some photographs maybe color certainly not colorized because they'll be wrong um but to show us so anyway that's the front end there's nothing on the other side but like i say you can see these top pieces that are skeletonized on the front on on the water jacket as well and then we can just get around and look at the serial number there h5529 which as i said in the intro is an october to december um manufactured gun in britain uh and then it, you know, it wouldn't have seen service, highly unlikely uh, to have seen service in the Great War that late on, uh, even if it was an early October one. Um, but the, you know, it obviously went um, overseas, was worn. It isn't stamped, I don't think. You can just see the VSM there, but I don't think it's stamped drill purpose anywhere. So it wasn't a worn out gun. It's clearly been decided to be skeletonized in any other way. It also hasn't had its serial number changed to an SKN serial number. That seems to be a factory based thing. So if they went out of the factory skeletonized rather than being done in the field, they were put with an SKN serial number uh, rather than uh, their original service number. So let's take a look at the left hand side now we've got obviously the fusey spring cover here is cut away so we can see the fusey spring operate we then have um the the front cover there cut away so we can see the um see the feed block operate and we'll, we'll, we'll cycle the gun in a bit and you can see all this happening um there's nothing we then have the whole of this left hand side uh cut away so you can see how that operates as well and what we can do is just remove this fusey spring cover, take off there, and you can see uh, some of the you know, additional features of the left-hand side of the gun now. So the back of the uh, recoiling portions plate, the lock, and this has been cut out, and this is the rear side of the internal fittings for the lock that are there. Um, just to say, this is one of the deactivation marks uh, where we've... Um, technically, yeah, so this gun was a deactivated gun. It now sits as a live gun, clearly not functional, uh, but it now sits as a live gun as part of our authorization from the Home Office. We haven't tidied that up yet. We keep it there to be able to show uh, some, of the, some of the tooling from deactivation. Uh, this one's also just missing its um, uh, locking uh, nut that sits on there, the screw nut. So we might put that back on. You might see that back on by the end of the video. Uh, so you can see inside there as well, now, if we put the uh, fusey back on, the fusey and spring and its cover, get that all lined up nicely, you can start to see uh, how it works. So we will just make sure that bottom cover's back. 
you can see the spring extend, the extractor drop, and move forward and put into action. So if you let it go, the spring isn't tense enough um, at the moment, but say so you can do that. Now, in our how to adjust the fusey spring video, we showed you how to do this. So if you want to increase, um, increase the tension, you need to turn this little handle down and maybe you can just see the, the, yeah, the spring elongating slightly there and we should be able to maybe, no, still too much tension on there. We're not gonna mess about with that too much. That's not the point of this video. If you wanna see that, go and see our Q&A video. Uh, so let's turn the gun round and, and have a look a little bit more. It's worth saying that as we turn the gun round, there's nothing really to note on the uh, recoiling portions. Obviously that was cocked. Uh, there, there's nothing. Sorry, there's nothing really to note on the rear cross piece. There's nothing really to note on the um, uh, rear sight, tangent sight. Nothing really to add of any detail there. So as we turn it round, we hit the board on the way past. We can just see that nothing there on the other side of the gun, and then we can start to look a little bit closely at this right hand side. So a quick look on this side of the gun, and we can see that skeletonization has clearly taken out some major parts of uh, here, and also just below the feed block there as well. Um, so if we flip this up and take the feed block out, you can see it a little bit better. So you can see where the, you can see a couple of things there. Um, you can see the, the, where the barrel connects into the recoiling plates, and you can just see the cannula here where the or if that's the right word for it where you, you put the, uh, the asbestos packing string um to ensure that the barrel doesn't or the barrel casing doesn't leak water so this is where you fit that you can you can see all this this additional uh, information we're saying well we've got the feed block out 553r you know i don't think it it's not a matching serial number to the block at all uh, but it is a steel uh, feed block which was um more apparent on great war guns uh, this, um, the R seems to indicate that it's a right-hand feed block, possibly therefore came from aircraft gun stocks where you'd have left and right-hand feed blocks. But otherwise, you know, quite nice condition on, on that feed block. It may have been one we've replaced in there rather than original to the gun, actually. So, not 100% sure. So, you can, so you can see, see these and you can start to see these function again where, the, you know, crank it back extractor drops moves forward so crank it back you can see the extractor horns running along the uh, rims there down drop and forward into position seeing as we've got the gun and it is before we disassemble it and show you some of the internals uh, we might as well just you know, cock it and show you it demonstrating so crank back forward crank back forward and you should have seen there how it cycles the ammunition so round drops out you can see the the round out of the feed block in there so that's the round off the face drops down we pull to the left comes in and the extractor goes up next round goes through we pull to the left etc so that's how the Vickers gun cycles let's see now, this is one of our um, oh, and we've got number three stoppage there, so we've got to hammer that down. This is one of our um, drill purpose belts, 25 round, made for, made for the specific purpose of you know, using in training like this. So now we can empty it, uh, so we don't pull the belt to the left this side this time, and we've got a round in the chamber still, so we still have to crank back twice to do so, and then it is safe to fire. What we'll do, uh, we won't disassemble this gun actually. Uh, you can see us disassembling uh, the Vickers in other videos, insert, including those on the armourer's bench. Um, but what we will do is just run it and cycle it from the other side so you can see how the uh, rounds run and how they look with the fusey spring operating. So we load the gun in the same way that we would load any Vickers. So let's say crank handle back, pull to the left, forward, back, and forward again and then it's loaded and ready to fire uh, so what can you see there 
as we crank it back, you can see the spring extend, the rain drops out in this case, I'm gonna pull it across and it, and it moves forward like that. Same again. For some reason it hasn't come through there. Perhaps we've got a little bit of a jam. No, it was just trying to pull through that. So let's unload and we get the two rounds off of the face of the lock there. Because it's skeletonized, one of the things we are able to do is to demonstrate the function of the feed block. So I'll move the camera up to there looking down and you'll be able to see how the feed block operates under recoil. Uh, that will then require me to push back on the muzzle cup um, and simulate the recoiling forces of the gas. So what I've had to do is just take off the, fee, the fusey spring there and also take off the muzzle attachment because what I'm going to be doing at this end to show the feedback, just push in this all the way in and operate in it as the gases of the um, ammunition being fired would operate. So they'd push against this case from the, from the inside of the muzzle attachment, uh, pushing against this disc. Uh, the gases expand there and then push back. So again, something you can see happening up in the, uh, up in the poster here. So you know, that is what, what, func what operates uh, the action of the entire weapon. And you can see the feed block here. Uh, you know, the, the, this is the detail of the feed block and how it works. So we will just, we're gonna set up the camera somewhere about here uh, and show you in more detail. So as you can see, there's the feed block. As we push the recoiling portions back, it operates this top lever here and then that pushes forward, uh, pushes the, 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 the top pulls that then will drag the ammunition belt through. It won't cycle like this with the belt in because of the stop that's in the feed block here. You know, this, this stops ammunition coming all the way through, but it does at least show you what's happening. Now, how does this work? If we just take the feed block out again, underneath, you've got this uh, indent on here. Now this is, um, what operates that top, those top pulls move in, that connects into the uh, extension of the left-hand side recoiling plate here in this groove. And that is what pushes the barrel back. So you can see there the barrel moving backwards and forwards quite nicely um, you know, here, being connected to these recoiling portions. And that's what would be pulling forward again by the fusey spring. So we've put the fusey back on, the fusey spring, and you can just see, let's say it's tension's low on it, but you can see how that um, works there. And if I now try and push, it's a lot harder for me because the spring is providing some resistance, but you can start to see how the spring extends as well, and that would operate the entire action uh, to move everything forward. So there we go, that turned very quickly from a gun study into a how the Vickers works, but that's one of the unique opportunities that we have with the skeletonized Vickers. Now we've got another one of these potentially on our shopping list uh, of acquisitions, so please do support us with uh, the Patreon membership and you might get to see, because they're, they're often cut in different ways, so it's, it's quite useful to have different examples, uh, you get to see different things uh, and, and, and different operations. Uh, as I said, this was a deactivated Vickers machine gun that we have done a little bit of work to, so we're able to show that um, mechanism and how it works. Uh, we are legally allowed to do so, so don't, you know, don't try this at home, kids. Um, it, it's not something that you should be doing uh, if you don't have the authorizations to do so. Uh, but clearly, it's completely non-functioning. Uh, there's so many uh, things that have been cut out of it. Uh, say so really really pleased to have this in the collection um do continue to support us as always you know those admin functions uh, you know the the, the advertorial these are the t-shirts that we have for sale on our teespring shop if you join as a patron uh, you get a discount code for those as well so we think they they're incredibly good value they're from the 1925 manual these line drawings uh, so they're great examples of this interwar um, most of them are actually drawn during the great war towards the end anyway they show machine gun corps uh, individuals that weren't around in 19 1925 they've been disbanded in 1922 um, we want to be able to uh, show you, you know, more and more of these training kind of operations like the rangefinder training series that we're doing at the moment we think that this should be something that's taught to uh, you know a group of individuals uh, in kit 
in you know a first person living history experience uh, that we're you know we're not able to get any other way at the moment and and obviously the skeletonized gun is a part of that we also have a skeletonized locks in the collection but that'll be the subject of another video at a later date so thanks for watching make sure you, sh you know, share subscribe like it all does our benefit for the algorithm uh, that youtube seems to seems to use and make sure that you turn on notifications for your videos and make sure you turn on notifications for your fa the facebook and twitter posts as well so that we can reach out to you as much as possible uh, say we've got a fair few more guns in the collection so we'll probably do one of these gun studies every month they'll bring out different aspects uh, this one brought out the mechanism of maintenance so it was a great one to start thanks for watching thanks for watching please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel please support us on patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future i look forward to hearing from you